Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The people quarreled about themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I said to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Every funeral that we celebrate really is a celebration of the faith and the sacrifice of the Eucharist. Now, why do you wear black when you go to a funeral? Don't have any clothes, other clothes to wear. Why does everybody wear black? It's a custom, but why do you wear black? You don't know why you wear black? Because you look slim, is that why you wear black? <laughs> no, that's not why you wear black, because your black is a sign of the past. The past of Anne and just buried, we buried, or Ed we just buried. It's a sign and a remembrance of his of the past life of this man or woman. So you're mourning the past. But how is the bread priest dressed? He's dressed in white. He's not living the past. Why am I am I in white? It's because I'm living in the present. This is where Anne is. This is where Ed is. In the present. In the present relationship with God for all eternity. The eternal present. Where God is present, there's no past or future with God, just the eternal present. So we're celebrating the entrance of Anne and Anne into the presence of the eternal life of God. So we wear white as in celebration. We're just going to baptize the baby after Mass. And she, he or she is a boy or girl, I don't remember. Well. Are you sure? <laughs> okay. Well, she better be dressed in white because what? She's being clothed with God's life. So that white is continued on at the funeral. And she's going to have a, a white pall over her, her uh, uh, coffin someday, 90 years from now, because she's been clothed with God's life. So we wear white. The pall is not black, it's white. And the priest is not dressed in black, he's wearing, because we're talking about the eternal presence that this young man Ed, 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 entered this past week. But when most of the people come to a funeral, what do they do? They don't see a funeral as a graduation to new life, eternal life. That death has been conquered through Jesus Christ. That death is all over. He's conquered it. Now he's going to, and she is going to live forever. Yes, most people come to a, to a funeral as if they're going to the movies. Now, what do you do when you're watching television? You sit back and you watch. Or you go to a play over the good speed. You sit back and enjoy the play. Most people, when they come to a funeral, act as if they're in a movie house or a playhouse or they're watching television. They come to be the audience. They come to watch this religious experience, this religious play, this religious celebration of Christ's death and resurrection and a renewal of his representation of Good Friday, Holy Thursday, and Easter Sunday. Yes, it's a passive uh, presence when we go to church. We just kind of sit back and kind of watch and wait when it's going to be over. And we, if we wear that black, or in some cases, the priest wears white. Some, some people, this is some time where they participate in, in the Mass. And to the degree that you really receive Holy Communion, to that degree you begin to understand what Mass is all about. So we come today to the celebration of the Mass today. Today we see the mystery and the miracle of this bread. Jesus says, I am the bread of life, the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread and drinks this blood will live forever. Wherever your hand is, there is your blood. Wherever your flesh is, there is your blood. So Jesus is saying, yes, 
How could this be, the people are saying. We know who he is. How could this be that this bread is his body and this wine is his blood? How could this be? Well, that's what a lot of people are saying right now. How can this be? I don't believe that that piece of bread and that wine that's changed into consecration into the body of blood, that's all it is. How can this be? So they question, and most Catholics question that, because 80% really do not believe this is the body and blood of Christ. It's a representation. It's a picture. It's a reminder of the real thing. Coke says it's the real thing, remember? What Jesus says is the real thing, the body and blood of Christ. Jesus told us that Holy Communion as a pledge of our bodily resurrection and the end of the world. Yes, we are going to be risen from the dead at the end of the world because of our participation in the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ right here, right now. The whole attitude is, uh, do we, what do we believe in Holy Communion? And the effect of our beliefs is our attitude towards the rest of the Mass. To the degree that you really believe that this is Jesus Christ. Well, last week when we had a funeral, a boy came up for Holy Communion. And most of the people were just watching the Mass. They weren't participating. They just come to watch, like to watch TV, or they go to movies. And they're just the audience. And this boy came up and said, uh, I looked at him, and he was kind of nervous. And I said to him, uh, uh, have you ever received Holy Communion? And he said, uh, I don't know. So I said, well, why don't I give you a, a blessing? You go back. So he walked back and sat and viewed and watched the religious uh, action, the religious play that we call the Eucharistic celebration. He didn't know what he was doing. But to the degree that you really believe that you're coming up here not for a piece of bread or not a glass of wine, but you're really coming up for the body and blood of Christ, either on the appearances of bread or wine, whichever, you get the whole Christ. To the degree that you believe in that, to that degree, you turn around and participate in Eucharist. But if you don't believe, the only time most people really participate in the celebration of the Eucharist is when they come up to Holy Communion. Then they really, for one moment, they are part of this celebration. A lot of people have the drive-by communion. You know, I went down to Burger King yesterday and I bought a hamburger and I put it through the window. A lot of people would like to have the Holy Communion put through the window have a drive-by communion because that's all that they see as part of the Mass. I come here to get that bread. But to the degree that you really believe this is the body and blood of Christ, to that degree you believe what Jesus said. Where two or three are gathered together, I'm in the midst of them. Though he is present at the Eucharistic celebration among you. So it's only one voice honoring our Heavenly Father as the one voice of Christ through the community. But to the degree that I believe that I'm receiving Jesus, to that degree I'm not just a passive presence, in the celebration of the Eucharist. I'm very active, not just at Holy Communion, but throughout the celebration. So there's a connection between my belief in the real presence and my belief that this celebration, this religious action, really is a participation, a sharing and a celebration and a representation of the Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. That what happened at those three days is happening at the Eucharistic prayer through, uh, in an unbloody manner, through Christ and with Christ, to give honor and glory to our Heavenly Father. So we come to give thanks for that privilege of receiving Jesus and transforming this celebration, not just a movie or a play, but an action, a play that you're in, a very much important part of the play, because through your voice, through your prayer, you are entering, honoring our, our, our Heavenly Father. But it's only one voice, Maybe you are singing different words, I mean different voices, but it's only one voice, the voice of Christ uh, honoring our Heavenly Father. But if you don't believe in the real presence, then you don't believe that presence, Jesus is present among you. So you sit and look at it as a, a TV show or as a play at a good speed. Yes, it, it's a miracle to believe in the real presence. Yes, we have to think about it in a very special way that the Eucharist is a sacrament of love, the beginning and source of all and energy of love. The Eucharist is a source of unity. I'm closer to you through the Eucharist than you are, than I am, and you are to the person sitting right next to you. Yes, the Eucharist really is a bond of charity. Where do I get my strength and not to be selfish, me, myself, and I? Only through the strength of the Eucharist that gives me a desire to be, reach out and touch someone with God's love. 
Yes, it's a reminder of the Easter banquet. Yes, it's filled with great, a grace, and it's a pledge of our future glory, what's going to happen to us, that we are going to be united for all eternity with Jesus Christ. Yes, we have to be mindful in our eating. I have to not just come take and take off, but be mindful of what you're receiving. To the degree that you are mindful of Christ's presence in your life, and the unholy community, to that degree you're mindful of the sacredness of this celebration, this holy hour that we're celebrating. And then if you really believe in Christ, and that this is a holy hour, it's a holy hour because it's Christ honoring our Heavenly Father through you, in prayer, in voice, in the Eucharist. But then you believe that Christ not only dwells within you physically for 15 minutes, but Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, dwells with you throughout the world. Where are you going after Mass? Are you going out to Dunkin' Donuts? Are you going to play golf? Are you going down to the beach? Are you going to a house? Are you going to celebrate? Are you going to have a little meal after this baptism? Where are you going? Well, to the degree that you believe in Christ's presence in the Eucharist, then you believe where two or three are gathered, it's Christ honoring and singing through you, praying through you, and then you believe that Christ is with you throughout the day and throughout the week. And it's an awesome mystery when Jesus said, I have the bread of life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will live forever. Not only for this life, but for eternal life. So the next time you go to a funeral, don't wear black. Wear white. A white day sign that you believe this person is now in the presence of Christ. There's no past or future with Christ. Past is history, future is mystery. The eternal present. Now when you come to a funeral, dress your faith. Black is you to remember the past. White, you remember today. That Christ is present in this person. Why? Because you believe what Jesus said. I have the bread of life, and whoever eats and drinks of my blood will live forever. Wear white. Or all excommunication. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs>